from the mountains of Java. Uh, this is your tarot reading for 2023 Sagittarius. And I really hope that you find it useful and get something from it. Hmm, Sagittarius. Of course, I'm reading for a year. So the fact that it's a sort of microcosm of life should come as no surprise. It appears to be about both love and money. There's certainly some disappointments, but I mean, you know, it's over a year. If we look at that central card, the lover's card, so it is telling me that this whole thing is about love and that permeates the entire reading. In the past, we had the hanged man. That's you hanging around waiting for something to happen. Now, I don't know if that was the health crisis or... Given that I think this could be about love, it might be just you waiting for love. I'm not sure. Your current energy is the high priestess energy. That's you in command of your emotions and maybe those of others. Maybe with one foot in the material world and one foot in the spiritual the future energy is the Six of Pentacles. That's a card of charity. I don't know if it's coming to you or you're giving charity. Could be either at this stage. The energy impacting on the outcome is the Five of Cups. That's you taking something of a pessimistic attitude towards things. And the card that would change the outcome is the Eight of Cups. That's you becoming disillusioned and walking away from something. And uh, the outcome is the Seven of Pentacles. That's you sort of learning a trade or, or developing something that will be useful in the future. Maybe a little bit laborious. So, I mean, it's it somewhat fits in with the Hanged Man, but the fact hanged man is in the past and this is in the future well I suppose you're at least doing something you're doing something for the future now I don't fully understand this spread at this moment in time so I'm going to have to look in a lot more detail at it and I hope you'll stick with me to find out more if it's having some resonance if I can ask you to hit the like button make a comment and also, if you can subscribe and hit the bell to get future notifications, it helps me incredibly. And so I really want to thank you so much in anticipation, Sagittarius. You may well be asking, why from Java? What's important about tarot from Java? And the truth is, there is nothing so important about tarot from Java, simply that here in Java we have many different spirits who will come to help in, in your tarot reading. It'll probably put a different reflection on things. For example, the spirits here are less likely to be concerned about love and finances, despite people in Java being every bit as interested in these things as the rest of us but maybe the spirits are trying to tell us something else. Now I'll be using probably two decks, but out of three decks. So the first deck is Tarot Nusantara. The second deck is the Steampunk deck. And the third deck is the Light Visions Tarot. Um, Tarot Nusantara is actually a new one to me, which, which I love. Whereas the Light Visions, um, I've struggled with uh, as a result of the rendering. Um, although I, I think I'll grow into it, I, I will keep using it and coming back to it. You can see on all of them, I'm using quite a lot of uh, salt. And that's to clear the energy and the spirits from them. Something that I do fairly regularly with my tarot. And I also, you'll see a number of gym out there that I use um, just to bring a good energy to the tarot um, and to my reading. Perhaps the most important mystical object we use in Java is the Chris, 
the curly knife that you can see that I've placed across both decks. Chris are very important for bringing the spirits to work on any object here in Java. To the mountains, help me shuffle the cards, select the right cards and interpret them correctly for Sagittarius for the year of 2023. The energy running throughout this entire reading is that of the lover's card and it is what it sounds like. It's about love. You look at the card, there's an angel above them, so there's something divine about it. The sun is shining down on them, they're blessed. It is the Garden of Eden, isn't it? It's Adam and Eve. She has the apples and he's covering himself with a fig leaf. And in the centre there is a Wyan character known as a Gunungan which has three sides, the known, the unknown, and the hidden. Don't know how relevant that is, but it might be. But what I would say is, it is telling me that this reading is about love, or at least love is important within this reading, and I need to remember that as I interpret all the other cards. Now, in your recent past, we have the Hanged Man. That's you waiting around for something to happen. It could be enforced upon you. So, some people, when I've seen this recently, I've thought it's to do with a health crisis. Maybe like me, you've not been able to move for nearly three years. I've not been able to get off the island of Java for nearly three years. I, I mean, I eventually managed to go and see my mother dying and arrange the funeral but didn't half take take a lot of effort uh, my well no I was gonna say my problems were as much mental but they weren't I mean there were real legal barriers towards me doing what I needed to do or at least bureaucratic so I don't know if it's self-inflicted, and I, I think it could be a bit of both, you know? But there's something you're not doing. Is it to do with love? Is it about love that you're not doing things? I'm not sure. I'm not sure at this stage. Now the current energy is that the High Priestess. And it just strikes, the High Priestess is the female version of the Magician. It just strikes me, it could simply be about manifesting. Uh, but the High Priestess is somebody in control of her, uh, her subconscious, and maybe those of others. She's somebody who is in between the sort of material world and the spiritual world. There's a sense of balance with her. If you look at the card, there's two columns, one black, one white. She has a wand in one hand and a book in another. Her foot is resting on the moon, so she has command and no fear of the unknown. How is this related to the love of God? I really don't know. I'd say it's a good card to have, but I can't quite see what the story is. The future energy is that of the Six of Pentacles, a card of charity. I don't know if you're receiving charity or giving charity. You look at it, I mean, she looks like Lady Bountiful, doesn't she? She's giving charity to the poor. How on earth does any of this fit in? Do you need to be more charitable in love? More charitable towards those you do love? I honestly don't know. It's not making sense at the moment, I have to say. Next card, which is the card that impacts on the outcome, is the Five of Cups. Now maybe this is beginning to tell more of a story, and that is, this is a card of pessimism. Is this a pessimistic attitude towards love or somebody that you're in a relationship with? 
I think it's more likely to be that. No, it could be you'll never find love, couldn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure. You look at the card, three cups are turned over, it's focusing on that, whereas there's two full cups behind him. If only he would turn round and see those. Perhaps even better, go across the bridge and there's a village that might be have loads of cups that are full. So, I, I've said a lot before that this feels psychological, and it does. It feels like the psychological restrictions. But I don't know if this is towards you finding love, or psychological restrictions in terms of an existing relationship. I still don't know. And now we have the Eight of Cups, which is you getting disillusioned and walking away from a situation. So it does feel like it's an existing relationship. I, I, I've had a thought, I've had a thought. And that is, I wonder if this is a long distance relationship, you know. Maybe you're both at university and you're at different universities, you were sweethearts at school but now there's distance between you. I mean you might simply be working away. Um, I'm not sure that this is a family relationship though. Could be, could be. Uh, but I think there's a sense of disillusionment. You know there was that waiting, that hanging around. Um, the control of your emotions being more charitable towards them but this card is definitely about walking away and you look there's those eight cups there they he knows what he's got but he's walking up that mountain and it will be difficult but he's determined to do it yeah Now the outcome is the Eight of Pentacles. This is you learning a skill or a trade for the future. Might be a bit laborious. Are you learning about love? Could be. Although it would fit in with my idea of a long distance relationship. A relationship by which maybe you're both away at university. Or, or you could be away learning a job that's going to be a used to the future of you both could be it's a bit boring at the moment you look at him he's hammering out those pentacles but he's repeating the same thing but it's sort of practice makes perfect is it practice makes perfect in love are you play in the field i don't think so i don't think so but of course that is a potential potential uh, way of seeing this I've got to get some clarity, haven't I? I'm going to seek clarity on the Five of Cups. Why are you pessimistic? And the first card of clarity we have is the High Priestess, which does suggest to me that you know something. Something in your subconscious is saying, this isn't going to work out. Yeah. Now the next card is the Three of Cups, which traditionally is seen as a card about celebrations and friendship. But I always think this, this particular rendering suggests a threesome. I, I don't necessarily mean it that in a sexual term, you know, but two people are vying for the same person's affections. And then finally we have the Hierophant, which I normally see about as formal religion. But it could be tried and tested ideas. Why does that make you pessimistic? Now, as I say, the first card of clarity is this High Priestess card. And we've had the High Priestess before, and that was your current energy. And I think this is about you knowing something, understanding something. I think it's about you understanding something about this relationship. And I'm not even certain now that it is a real relationship, and I'll come to that. 
Um, yeah, I'll come to that later. What I think it is, is you're discovering something about it and it's making you feel pessimistic, like it'll never work out. You look at her, I mean, it does feel like she's manifesting. She does feel like a female magician here, doesn't she? She feels like she's manifesting. Is it that this is a forbidden love? That's what it's feeling like to me now. Now this, this Three of Cups, I mean it's meant to be about celebrations and friendships. But this rendering always makes me think about a sort of a three-way relationship. So I've talked about a forbidden... Well you look at it, he, he's in between those two girls uh, vying for his affection. And I think that you are falling in love with somebody that's unobtainable. They're already in a relationship. They might already be married. And it may even be that they don't have affections for you. You know, you, it's, it might even be in your mind. It might be an infatuation. But it doesn't feel that healthy to me, what's going on here. And I think in your heart of hearts, you know that you know that you really shouldn't be pursuing this. And now we have the Hierophant card, which is normally about religion, but it, I think this is about your value systems. I mean, it, it could be a religious problem with this forbidden love, but I think it's more about your value systems, and that is that you feel you shouldn't be pursuing this love and as I say it might simply be an infatuation could even be say an infatuation with a teacher or a university lecturer you know I feel they're unobtainable and you know they're unobtainable and you know you shouldn't be doing this but you simply can't help yourself that's what it feels like because you look they're sort of learning from that guru, aren't they? And he's telling them tried and tested ways. And I think that's what's making you depressed because you know this isn't what you should be doing. It's not the way you should be doing things. Oh, Sagittarius, what have you done? What have you done? You've fallen in love with somebody that's unobtainable. It might not even be love. You think it's love, but it might not be reciprocated. It might simply be infatuation. And, you know, you're, you're hanging around, you're biding your time for this love to come to fruition. But will it ever? You've got these feelings, you've got this command of it. You're probably even trying to manifest this love. You might even be using magic to try and make this love happen. But I think this love is unobtainable. And I think you need to be more charitable towards yourself and towards them and to understand the situation better. Uh, because it's making you depressed because you realise it's unobtainable. You realise it's unobtainable, but you somehow can't help yourself. And, uh, is it up unobtainable because they've got another? And I think, yes. But it could be more than that. Because I think there's something that really goes against the grain with this relationship. And it could be a pupil-teacher relationship. It could be a student-lecturer relationship. A boss employee relationship. But there's something that goes very much against conservative values about this relationship. Now, what I think you do is you resolve to continue to bide your time and to sort of develop things within yourself, maybe learn things or develop your skills so that you're better placed to be able to approach this person. 
Or maybe you already have a brooch and maybe they know all about it. Uh, but they're not in a position to leave whatever relationship they're in to come with you. And maybe you have to do, do more to do it. Uh, but I think the universe is telling you to walk away from it. My every instinct is saying that you should walk away. Now, I don't know if that's good advice or not, but that, that does feel like the advice is being given. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed Tarot from Java as an addition to my channel, The Magic of Java. Please take a look at the other, the other uh, videos that I have on this channel about magic from Java. And I hope that you will be, become a subscriber. Now, if you want to find, hear your next tarot reading, hit the button and that will inform you of when I publish new, um, new readings. I'm certainly going to do a reading for every month, but maybe I will try them a bit more frequently, say a mid-month reading, and maybe also some special readings. But above all, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, and enjoy Java. <laughs>